Hey guys, welcome back to another video on my channel. Today we are back with the second episode of building a diesel locomotive. This right here is what we got up to last time. We ended up building some bogies underneath. Uh, we built the cabs on one side and the other side. And uh, we actually added some ladders as well as a fuel tank. So we did actually quite good for the first episode. What I want to do today is actually figure out how tall an engine's going to be and start building it in the center because I still don't know what I want the cabs to actually look like on either side. So let's get building and see what we can come up with. All right, so I want this thing to be able to be quite strong, to be able to pull anything, so let's go straight to engine. Uh, we could, of course, use a giant engine like this. It looks all right, actually, and would be quite useful. Uh, but what we're going to do is use a 3x3. Three three. Honestly, the 3x3 three three just makes sense to use, so let's do it. Um, it'll allow us to walk down the outsides of it, and it's also going to be definitely powerful enough uh, to run this vehicle. So, how about we have two three-cylinder engines? I know that doesn't make much sense, but I kind of like the idea of that, having two engines um, separated by a little bit of space so we can get around them, and they're able to push and pull us. That could be cool. So yeah, I'm literally thinking that we use it just like this, and that just looks fine. Um, let's go ahead and build all of this in. We obviously need all of the different pieces to go to this, uh, and that should be pretty good. Does this go straight on the crankshaft? It looks like it does. So we're going to go ahead and shove that there. We're then going to go backwards, we'll get ourselves a flywheel. It'd be really nice to actually have one of these. Obviously we'd have to delete that to have one, or we can just move the entire thing upwards. You know what? We might as well cut this, move it upwards by about two... Nah, just one. There we go. Paste that there. Does it fit now, is the question. And yes, it does. There we go. So, let's fix in some fixings on the floor. There we go. Merge this down with this. And I'm going to do a similar thing over here. There we go. I want this to try and, like, look nice. So, I'm actually going to do something like this, too. And like this. There you go. Yeah, doesn't look too bad. Okay, so all of these cylinders are already attached together, so all we need to do is have an exhaust go out of this. I'm actually going to do it on both sides. It's going to go out the top. We obviously need fuel that's going to come in from the bottom, and we need air that's going to come in from the top. So, air is going to go that way, and on the other side, fuel will go down into the bottom. In fact, let's just put it here. There we go. Delete this guy. Uh, actually... Yeah, I guess we could. Delete that, there we go, go down and into here. Where are we? <laughs> we're in a bogey, that's not where we actually want to be. So we're going to have to send it this way. Actually, I'm going to do it underneath there. Until we get to the fuel tank. Yeah, no, this is fine. So delete all of that to about this point, And we'll add the way to get fuel into here. Alright, so we're going to need a pipe. Let's go ahead and shove this right here like this. There we go. Let's go ahead and attach this directly up to there. And then we're going to have to have this guy go sideways. All right, which is interesting. There you go. And we are going to send it this way. Although, actually, now that I'm looking at this, we're going to have to do this in this color. There we go. That makes sense. And then we can just go ahead and do a straight pipe. And as soon as we get to the fuel tank, we can just add a fluid port. Here we go. So, fluid pot is going to go directly onto here, and that's good enough for me. Although, it's wide open. <laughs> it is wide open, but all we need to do is this, and then grab some white and paint that back in. Yeah, that's fine. There we go. Cool. So, our fuel is attached. Our air shall be attached very soon, and um, the exhaust will be attached very soon, too. Okay, what do we need next? Well, we are going to need an actual clutch. So, let's go ahead and get one of those uh, and shove it onto here as well. It's a 3x3, three three. it goes directly onto there, and that's kind of all we need to do. We then need another engine to be turned around and placed in the opposite way, and that should work too. Okay, so here's the other engine placed in the other way around. Let's go ahead and spawn this in. Do they look tiny or do they look somewhat legit? I think they look somewhat legit. That's kind of cool. Okay, there is another thing that we actually do need to do, and that is to uh, add some coolant. So, uh, the way that I want to do this is actually just have a thingamabobby right here. So this is coolant and coolant. 
Uh, apparently we do need a pump, so we're gonna add a pump onto the engine, just one of these guys. There we go, and we're gonna need to do the same thing on that one, but don't worry just yet. Okay, so, if we get ourselves a pipe, uh, we should be able to just pipe this straight up, just kinda like this. Oop. There we go, and I think... I don't know, I was gonna try and wrap the engine, but I don't think that's actually a good idea. <laughs> so, I'm gonna go ahead and shove this into the sky like this. I'm gonna move this into the center using these guys. I think the engine... or oh, the engine roof uh, can be a little bit higher than this. So, we're now gonna move this into a location where we can actually use it. And that should be good, so do that. There we go, shove this here, and do this. There we go, and we're gonna do this. Bosh, and this. Oh, bosh, all right, cool. So the coolant, or the radiator, can go on top of here. At least I think so, anyway. So let's go ahead and quickly do this. There we go, get ourselves a heat thingamabobby, one of these guys, and chuck that directly under the top, like so. Okay, there we go, coolant is done. And now I've placed it on the other engine too, so we've got it on both engines, very nice. Let's have a little look at that and see uh, what we think. Honestly, it looks, it looks fine to me. Uh, obviously the air is going to go up next to that, and on this side, or the other side, it's going to be the same. Okay, so in order to do that, let's just grab this, put one of those on there, we're going to do the same thing on this side, obviously. There we go, and I'm just going to go straight to air. And I think I'm just going to put a filter on the top there, and a filter on the top right here. That seems pretty good to me, I guess. Uh, from there, we're going to go ahead and grab this guy and this guy. Here we go. And we're going to have some fluid pots. Actually, you know what? Let's just go with exhaust for now. Here we go. Just so that we know what everything is when it comes to adding a roof. There we go. Nice. That actually isn't too bad. I think this engine will actually run now. Kind of. We need some starters. I am going to add an alternator, and that should be good. So, go back to engine. Yes. Uh, we need some alternators. I'm just going to go ahead and shove these on the bottom. We don't really need them, because I could add some generators. But that's fine. And we are going to add a starter as well. Two of them. There we go. We need to do the same thing on this side. Yes. Turn that around. Whack those on there. And on the bottom, we need the alternators. Yet again, one and two, good. Okay, I think what I'm gonna do as well, by the way, when I said I added alternators, uh, we are gonna keep those, not that we really need them. Uh, and what we are gonna do as well is actually attach one of these guys to here, one of these guys to here. Actually, these are gonna be T pieces. Hold on, pipe, here we go. Yep, shove this guy onto there like this, and this one onto here like this, good. Okay. There we go. So these guys are obviously to uh, run the engines, or run the, the wheels, I should say. We're then going to go ahead and add a gearbox onto the top of this. And we're going to send it towards the engine. There we go, twice. Then we're going to get a generator, just a medium one, and shove it on there, and shove it on there. And that is going to be pretty much our engine setup. Obviously from there we need to go to these pieces, because that's how we run the wheels. Don't know how I'm going to get there just yet, but we will, I'm sure. Oh, I've actually got an idea. So, we delete this guy right here, this guy right here. We can delete this pretty much all the way along to here. That's fine. And we can do the same thing on this side from there, all the way along to there. And we can just shove it in. So, let's go straight to pipe. Yes. Let's go to angled and do this. There we go. And that. There we go. Very nice. We can then get a normal straight pipe, which... I, yeah. All right. We can just go ahead and do this. And we're going to do the same thing on this side. Delete that guy again. Shove in an angled piece that hopefully is in the correct uh, orientation. There we go, good. And we're going to do a very similar thing right here. So there you go, that's good. And I think that's good too. Yes, it is. All right, we are going to need gearboxes on these guys as well. And I think they are actually going to point towards the engine too. There we go. Uh, and I guess we can go with, like, three to one on all of the gearboxes? Yeah, I'm sure that's fine. We will also need a reverse gear. 
Um, but that's somewhere else down the line. Don't worry about it. Okay, so what I'm going to do from here is actually build in a little uh, thingamabobby just like this. Actually, should it, ha should it be there or should it be here? Yeah, I'm going to do this and this is going to be a panel. So we're going to do keys uh, to start the engines essentially. This one's going to go here to start this engine. This one's here to start this engine. And they are both going to have their own little throttles directly underneath. I'm sure that's fine. There we go. And there we go. Uh, we'll then have... Um, a dial for each engine, I guess? And that should be good too, maybe? Actually, you know what? This will be for fuel. There we go. And this will be for battery. There we go. And then, underneath, we're going to have some instrument panels. Which are going to be pretty good too. So if we delete this and this, we can put the instrument panel right in here. And another one right there. And essentially, we'll have the RPS and stuff like that of this engine, and then the RPS and temperature and stuff of this engine. That'd be good. Okay, so that is looking kind of sophisticated and actually looks really awesome. Um, I've gone ahead and put the fuel on this one, the battery on that one, we've got the engine RPS on this, and the engine RPS for that one on that one. We've then got engine temperature and engine temperature on this one. Now, realistically, I've done this somewhat wrong because the engine temperature is actually coming from the radiator, which is not really what you want. So I think we'll probably change that in the future. We'll have to move this out by one and then we could put an engine temperature reader on there, that'll be fine. And then the same on this side. But yeah, I actually think that looks really cool for right now. What I'm gonna do next is actually get the engines running and then we'll test them. Okay, so we don't currently have a battery, but uh, this should all somewhat work now as long as we actually do infinite fuel and infinite uh, electricity. If we do this and that, no? Okay, never mind, it's not gonna work. Okay, it's because I didn't actually put the microcontrollers, uh, I didn't merge them. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and see if we can actually start this engine with just two starters. Oh, there we go, it is actually running. There you go, engine one is running at about 84% efficiency, and then engine two... ...is trying to crank, and that should start running too. There you go, engine RPS is going up, engine RPS is at 20, uh, engine temperature is at 22, and 22. Yeah, again, that's not engine temperature, that is the radiator up there, which should be spinning. It's not. <laughs> Never mind. Um, they will both work eventually. Don't worry about that too much. But yes, both engines are actually running, which is awesome. Okay, so if I already wanted to move this locomotive, all I would have to do is start the engines. Here we go. All right, this takes a little bit of time, but that's okay. Obviously, it's only two starters. We have a flywheel, which I rarely ever use, but I've, I've used it on this. Felt like it made sense. Let's go ahead and throttle this up. Throttle this up and do this. There you go. It's running and it is moving and we are actually just flying down the track at actually quite fast speeds. We're going really quick. We are going so fast. Okay, um, well, you know what? At least it works, right? At least it works. I think I'm about to die. I'm not gonna lie. Oh, we are flying around the track. Yes, this gives me like high hopes for this, to be honest. The fact that the engine is actually working uh, is really, really cool. What I'm gonna do is turn off the infinite fuel. Ah! <laughs> oh, I'm dead. I am so dead. There we go. Because uh, with infinite fuel on, you don't have any exhaust. But obviously when you turn it off, the exhaust comes out. But that is awesome. Uh, and I think we've done a really good job with that. I think it looks pretty good. Uh, and that is something that I really usually, or I normally struggle with. So for now, I'm gonna go ahead and end this video here. Uh, and then in the next one, we'll try and decide what we actually want the, um, I was going to say the cockpit. We'll want the cab to look like on both ends, and we'll figure stuff out from there. But honestly, this looks really cool. I'm very happy with it. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Goodbye.